Okay, so we are going to start. Uh, so good morning to all and welcome for this uh, fourth meeting on governance and the third technical meeting on uh, um, how to elaborate your proposals. Um, so today uh, we are going to focus on eligibility of expenditure and budget composition. Uh, and we are going to make uh, um, a comprehensive uh, presentation. So, please, you can go. Uh, so, until now, uh, you had the possibility to, to get, uh, to have a look on the main aspect of, uh, of the governance call. So, we presented you the, the term of references and then we entered on the calendar and tools uh, allowing to prepare your, to prepare your proposal. The two previous technical meetings were about the composition of your partnership, the intervention logic, uh, the preparation of your work plan and the understanding of the program indicators. And today uh, we are going to focus on the last point on, of your new application form. Uh, we have not detailed yet and that will be the budget. So my colleagues uh, Massimo and Jopien uh, will go more into detail on the main aspect to be considered uh, about the, the budget. So as uh, in the previous uh, in the previous um, the previous meeting, we are going to maintain the, the same format. So a first presentation of the main point to be um, to be known and understood by you concerning uh, the, um, the elaboration of your budget. And then uh, Jofia will go into detail on uh, the eligibility of expenditure. So it will be a sort of breaking news because uh, the manual will be will be published by tomorrow. Uh, so, but you will have uh, anyway the, the full information uh, today, and by tomorrow you will have access to the to the manual on the on those aspects. And finally, uh, Massimo will go uh, through gems in order to show how to fill in the budget and uh, the news uh, respect to the, if you were already with, the, with us in the 4020 period, the main changes when uh, building uh, your budget in gems. So um, for the key information, you already know that on the program website, you have the regular update of, the, of our manual because we are making um, a validation per packages with our member states. So the tours and the documents from the call are already available. You also have the information of how to build your, how to compose your partnership. Um, and by tomorrow, you will have the eligibility section with detailed aspect, public procurement, and also all the points presented by my colleagues last uh, during the last meeting about uh, the activities and the intervention logic. And the following step will be the contracting package. So for the by tomorrow, you will have the main. Uh, you will have all the elements needed in order to elaborate uh, your, your application. Concerning GEMS, uh, some of you already uh, accessed to the system because we see that uh, you are already drafting some, uh, some proposal. So thank you. And uh, you know that we are making regular improvements with our IT provider. So don't be scared. Uh, if we make an improvement, there is no risk of missing the information you already charge on the system. Um, they, are, they are working on that very, very accurately. And uh, if you didn't access yet to the system, um, I wanted to remind that you have to access uh, by your home. So you go on the page, uh, on the GEMS page directly, and then each lead partner uh, is able to create its own access. And then for the partner, they also have the possibility to create their profile through uh, the main page. And uh, we will see then with, uh, with Massimo that as a lead partner, you will also have the possibility to add those contacts, the ones uh, your partner uh, created, to add those contacts on the application form in order for them to have a reader profile. 
So uh, this will be very important, especially for the part uh, that is um, presented today, because we would like you to counter check a series of points uh, with your partner before uh, submitting the, the final application form. So from now, I give the floor to, to Massimo for uh, how to draw up your budget, and then we will make um, a Q&A session. Uh, for each uh, chapter. Thank you. Hello, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Yes, we will go with the general principles to rolling up uh, the budget, knowing that all, all those information are <coughs> published in, the, in this section that you see you know, on the screen. It's driving up my budget of the program in my one. <coughs> So, as a general principle, the, as you uh, surely know, the budget is built up following the sound financial management. So, you have to follow the economy, efficiency and effectiveness when you uh, start to grow up uh, your budget. And uh, concerning the points uh, related to this uh, call for proposal, uh, you, you remember that um, the budget should be done in euro, and the activities has to be have to be implemented mainly in the uh, Euromed cooperation area, including ERDF countries and IPA countries. Uh, so then, <clears throat> as a general principle, all the project should be uh, must be developed in close cooperation with your partner and the budget must be uh, must reflect the activities uh, planned in the work plan. Last but not least, uh, you have to uh, develop your budget following the budget, the five budget categories that are foreseen in the budget. And um, <clears throat> for this call for proposal, uh, you will have obligatory, mandatory, 80 months, so the budget will be split in uh, 14 periods. So remember to uh, modify it manually. If you haven't done it already, you should put 80 months in total for the for your project. But we will see in details when we will do the James demo session. Going through another um, basic point is the co-financing co of operation. So the, the very new uh, aspect of this of the next programming period is will be will be that there will be only one uh, fund, which is called Interreg Fund, which uh, contains both ERDF and the IPA funds. So you will. Uh, we will work with a, a unit of funds. This is a very good uh, news that will help in uh, management aspects of the, of the project for sure. So the um, co-financing rate is changing uh, in relation with this uh, planning period. We will be at 80% of the total eligible budget and the remaining part, the 20%, uh, should be provided uh, by external contribution, as you surely know, that should be uh, public or private, and within this uh, difference, it should be a uh, own contribution or external contribution with uh, particularities, particularities for uh, Italy and Greek, Italian and Greek partners, which could uh, access to uh, special national uh, funds. But uh, we will see uh, in details when we will talk about the uh, co-financing operation to be done in uh, JS. So, um, as a general uh, advice, now we can uh, say that there are uh, three, uh, four main points that you have to uh, agree uh, previously with your, uh, within your partnership. So is, of course, the original amount of the co-financing, the travel and the accommodation methodology to be used, because there are very important news about this uh, cost category, which uh, will be tackled by my colleague, Zofia. And uh, then 
there is a specific session on uh, state aid uh, on, the, on the budget uh, tab of the application form and we will talk uh, at the end of this first part of the of the presentation and then um, you have to um, decide which is the share of the preparation cost within the partnership so you have to be carefully uh, in this uh, phase to uh, to prepare the application form accordingly and the lump sum accordingly so we would like to insist on these points because when the project will be in case the project will be approved those four points will be very difficult to uh, no it's not difficult to change the points but the application form will uh, be um, uh, suffer <laughs> Um, uh, modification and it would, would be difficult to, to manage them. So the general principle that we want to pass here is that a solid application form at this stage we will permit a solid project implementation in, uh, in the future. Um, going to another important point which is the uh, major new, uh, new uh, in the next programming period is that the new uh, regulation <coughs> Um, states that the VAT, the VAT, the value added uh, tax, is always eligible for all those projects of under, equal or under to 5 million euro, which is always the case for interreg projects. So, in a, uh, in, uh, by a consequence of that, in the next programming period, the value added tax will be always eligible in uh, for uh, all the inter euro made uh, projects in case you have some particular uh, rule at internal uh, level or at national level you are kindly requested to contact your national contact point by the contact us uh, section on the program website there is a dedicated page and then you will find all the contacts um, sorted by country. Maybe we have the opportunity to see further on. Um, <clears throat> going through the activities, um, as for this programming period, for uh, the next programming period, you will not you will not have the uh, obligation to uh, create to to foresee budget for the creation of the logo of the logo of the project or the management tool or the website cost because all those uh, features are provided by the program so you don't need you don't have to uh, budget those uh, those item um, but you have to remember that you have to budget the human resources needed to manage the website, the social networks, and, and the base camp animation. Basically, the fact that the program it provides some aspect of the communication uh, work, uh, the communication line, uh, doesn't mean that you don't have to provide uh, human resources to manage them. Same uh, thing for the management. We uh, strongly advise that the, um, to foresee uh, human resources for the implementation of project activities and reporting activities, bearing in mind that reporting activities is not only in the narrative part and uh, the financial reporting, but maybe it's good to uh, split them into different uh, human resources are part of the coordination of the general project. So uh, before I jump to the next slide, we remind you that we don't foresee specific working package for those uh, okay. items for the communication and management, so you can uh, freely fill uh, in. Filling in an application form. Let's talk uh, uh, still about activities with a list of compulsory mandatory activities that should be filled in, in the application form. You have an exhaustive um, 
list of mandatory activities in a specific section of the program manual. So I remind you, I, uh, I invite you to, to, to consult this, uh, this, uh, this part of the manual tomorrow, if I yeah. <laughs> uh, starting by tomorrow. Uh, all that I would like to point out here is the, um, the point joined to the results amplification strategy and the decarbon offsetting. The first one is, uh, you as a lead partner should foresee at least two events per year uh, to, in order to contribute to the contribute to the result amplification strategy and the program activities. So this is the minimum required uh, in the um, working plan and by that in the budget. And concerning the carbon uh, offsetting, uh, as you maybe know, we are we a project in progress that foresee to um, provide tools for calculating the carbon um, offsetting of project activities, but uh, we will make a specific seminar already anticipated by Divin uh, about the carbon offsetting. So we will be, we, you will have more information about that in the next seminar. But so going through the end of this first part, we would like to point out about the, the commitment rule. Um, uh, we don't want to go a lot on mechanism about the, the commitment rule, but um, we put here the general article with 105 of the regulation 1060, and uh, it says that you should basically say that you should foresee your budget in line with your uh, foreseen expenditures. So there should be always um, an, um, a correspondence between what you write now in the application form and what you foresee to be spent in the, during the implementation of the project. So uh, we will see in the application form that there are specific tables that will permit you to will allow you to uh, follow the expenditure in the, in the um, in all the period. So. Uh, I remind I remind the specificities when we do when we do the, the demo demonstration at the end of this morning. Um, going through the last point, last but not least, is the state aid compliance, which is a novelty if you want in this in next economic period because um, it is integrated in the application for um, in this in the current parameter period was uh, um, a matter was treated uh, apart if you will, offline okay. and uh, the compliance is um, has to be done for each partner but as a general principle is say that the state aid is considered by the European Commission as a, an aid granted by member states uh, which distorts or threaten to distort the competition by favoring certain undertakings uh, or the production of certain goods. I will put you know, at the very end of the slide a uh, link of the um, DG competition of the European Commission. So if you want to uh, 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 know more about the state regulation, there is the, the link of the European Commission and a specific fact sheet of the program manual. But for what concerns this, uh, the, the application form filling, you have to know that the, the, the European Commission, the European Union, the, the Commission um, prohibits the co-financing uh, activities falling under state aid rules. There is a list, a correct list of uh, activities. And for what uh, may concern here, the, this scheme, of state aid scheme, only applies for EU member states. So the partners located in EU member states. In case uh, you are a partner located in an IPA country, 
you are obliged to not have economic activity in your in the project that you are uh, growing now. So this is a very important point to be followed, and we will see in the demo uh, how to deal with it. So as already said in the application form, there is a self check um, a self check. Uh, page to, to be filled in and then you will have the, the result of this check will bring you in different ways let's <laughs> say but the message that we want to pass here is that all these operations should be done before the application for uh, submission because if we do, we'll do uh, afterwards after the submission of the application form and in case of application form uh, Approbation. Um, they should be. They should slow a lot the process of uh, final uh, approval of the the, the project. Um, <clears throat> so, for what may concern Euromade program, we have uh, tackled for the state aid. Um, regulation to exemption, which are uh, specifically provided for interreg uh, projects that are the so-called Article 20 is the general block exemption regulation or the de minimis regulation. So we will see there are two specific, uh, two specific um, schemes to be followed at this regard. So when you go, when you will go to the application form, you will have in the partnership tab the uh, state aid criteria self check. When you fill in, you will have the, 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 the main possibility should be that the, there will be no state aid relevance for your activities. In this case, you will, you, you will have nothing to do. So you can continue uh, filling your uh, budget and uh, submitting the application form. There is the possibility that the, the skill, the, the self check, the, brings you to a risk of state aid relevance. So, in this case, you will have two possibilities to remove the risk of the state aid by operating on the activities, changing some activities, or foreseeing some specificities for uh, the, the activities, such as public procurement or um, and so on but again in the program manual you have um, all the example and um, all the possibilities to uh, avoid this risk or in case you cannot uh, remove the risk of uh, state aid you will follow a state aid um, um, regulation exemption and you will have to choose and, uh, between two uh, schemes, one is the GBER, which allows you to have uh, um, a threshold of 2 million euro in the last three years, or the minimis um, scheme, which allows you uh, um, a threshold of 200,000 euros uh, in the last three years uh, of, your, um, of your life. So, but this is a very complex uh, scheme. We tried to resume into slide, but it's very difficult. And so we decided to make a scheme, <laughs> maybe to help the, the understanding of this of this point. So the first point is that the partner is or not located in a EU member state. If no, the, in this case, it is a partner located in an IPA country. So in the work plan of the partner should not be, they must not be economic activities. For the definition of economic activities, you can refer to the program manual or to the site of the DG competence, competition. Sorry. Uh, in case is a EU member state, we can follow with the state aid uh, analysis. So you, we have to uh, see if the to analyze if there are state aid relevant activities. So if there are no activities that are 
uh, analyze that uh, stated relevance, you can follow on with your uh, application form. In this case, we are in the green part of the, the, of the state aid self check, so there is no, there is no risk of state aid uh, relevance. In case we have activities that should be uh, considered as state relevance, we are in the yellow part, is the, this should be a risk. In this case, we have, you have to ask to yourself, to your part, to the partners, if the risk can be removed. In case the risk can be removed, you will follow, you will come back to the green part of the of the analysis and uh, you can continue to the with the application from submission if you cannot remove the risk you will you will follow uh, your you will be obliged to follow the scheme of state aid relevance and knowing that there is a very particular point which may be concern only let's say the italian and greek partners because in case it, uh, the partners decide to uh, follow the external uh, automatic contribution done by the, the state, the public institution, they are obliged to follow the, the minimis scheme. So the ERDF uh, contribution uh, threshold should be set in 200,000 uh, euro in the last three years. So, uh, by the reverse, uh, if there is no provision to follow the uh, external automatic contribution, the partner has uh, to, choice, to choose between three different uh, schemes. Uh, we recommend the GBR one because it permits a larger amount you know, as a threshold because it's two millions, but it depends from the from the, the case for, for each part, but we will see in the demo for, uh, for more details. Uh, I hope it's more it's clear if you have a uh, <laughs> question. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Massimo. So this is a very broad and complex topic, so we try to make it uh, as uh, understandable as possible. Uh, nevertheless, you have the manual which uh, details the whole information and we put the accent today on the fact that you have to make this pre-assessment, this self-assessment. Uh, self uh, so you will do it from the system uh, being lead partner, but uh, the partner will have to counter check the result of your um, of the, the self-check. And depending on the results of the state aid, you will have to amend or not the content of your application form or to reduce the budget if you have to respect one or the other threshold. So um, this is uh, the main, uh, main information concerning the elaboration of the budget. Do you have any question on that? Not only on state aid. Uh, yeah, we have a question concerning the two events per year uh, with open events where the participation of all partners of the consortium needs to participate. Um, maybe our colleagues from the, um, the project unit uh, want to complete, but uh, it's not about uh, your internal uh, meeting, it's about uh, external public meeting. Uh, then for the specific content, I let maybe Sophie uh, complete. Yes, hello, good morning. Uh, this has not been uh, at, uh, defined uh, totally because it will depend on the type of event we will organize but it's to foresee that we will have some meetings in coordination between all the um, governance project and the um, the JS mainly um, in order to coordinate our activities. So for sure, I don't think that it will. Uh... Yeah. OK, you get the main message. <laughs> okay. I think we. It's okay because I thought the, the end of the the sentence was not. Uh, it's 
Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I, I said that it's, uh, it, we, for, I think that we won't need all partners to be, uh, to be in, in each of these meetings, but uh, to some of the partners, depending on the uh, topic tackle in each of it. I think it's clear. Um, then we have another question. Uh, Besides direct financial support to third parties, which fall obviously under state aid and is not foreseen in the direct agreement, what about indirect support like training, mentoring, etc.? So about uh, removing the state aid relevancy um, of uh, third parties. So indirect. Are you talking about the indirect state aid? What stated in the 28? Yeah. In this case, the threshold is 20,000 euro for final beneficiary. So you can foresee it, but you have to for you have to uh, cons consider that the threshold the threshold is 20,000 euros for each final beneficiary that you foresee to include. If you receive the training or whatever. And uh, be careful because we are not talking about, let's say, the fee to enter in the training. We are talking about all the financial uh, aspects of the of the training. Then we don't have specific methodology to determine the exact risk, uh, the, the exact amount. But you have to consider all the the all the costs that could be uh, integrated in the activity. So the preparation of the, uh, the preparation of the, uh, of the training, the, uh, the advantage that could be received by the, the third party, etc. Right. Okay. So we might come back to. Yes, we will have the opportunity to, to see it if you want in details when we will make the demo. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, so if you don't have other topic, uh, I will pass the floor to my colleague Zofia. Uh, that will go into detail concerning eligibility of expenditure. <clears throat> Thank you, Lundili. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Uh, I would like to talk about the rules of eligibility of expenditures. Uh, all, uh, all rules are set out in the program manual, which will be available, as we thought already, from tomorrow. <laughs> okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, there is three levels of rules concerning to the eligibility. The first one are the EU rules. Uh, the most often used uh, regulation are listed here. Uh, what is important that the program rules uh, has been established based on the EU regulation and uh, constitute additional program-specific rules. So uh, all these uh, rules are set out in the program manual. Uh, in some cases, national eligibility rules apply also. Uh, that case when the program or the EU eligibility rules don't cover the, the issue, the problem we face, then uh, we should check uh, the national eligibility rules. Um, in this uh, national eligibility rules can be found uh, uh, by the national authorities, uh, and we recommend that these rules must be checked before the project uh, start. Uh, if you have doubts what are the national eligibility rules, uh, please contact the national contact points. As we said, uh, the all contact information are available on our website. So, uh, 
from a time-wise perspective, uh, we have two periods, the preparation and the implementation period. The, the costs incurred during the preparation and contracting phase are covered by a lump sum, uh, which is established by the program. And I will uh, talk about it a bit later in detail. The second phase is the implementation phase of the activities. Uh, the starting date of this uh, period is, is also the starting day of the eligibility of the expenditures. And this date is the approval of the project by the program community. Uh, and uh, the uh, uh, second important date is the end date of the eligibility period, uh, which is, uh, in your case, in this specific call, it's, uh, it's a date fixed. It's the 3rd June of 2029. So it's very, very far away, but you <laughs> have to keep in mind that all uh, expenditure uh, must be incurred and paid by uh, the end date of the project. Okay, technical break. <laughs> Okay, sorry for this. this is a break, but we are on on the on the track again. So uh, important, uh, <clears throat> it's important to talk about the forms of reimbursement of the cost uh, expenditures uh, during the project uh, implementation. There are C simplified cost options uh, used by the program in the new programming period. The first one is the lump sum for the preparation cost. Uh, this uh, cost is, uh, this amount is fixed in 37,000 euros. Uh, and uh, I want to highlight that this is uh, uh, com compulsory, mandatory for all project part or project and uh, it will be paid after the signature of the subsidy contract. Um, the second one is the flat rate for office, office and administration costs. Uh, it's the same like in this current period, it's fixed 15% of the eligible staff cost. And I, have a, I would like to highlight that this is also mandatory for all partners. Uh, the third one is the flat rate for travel and accommodation. It's a new element in the inter EUMED program. Uh, the flat rate varies according to the country in which the project partner is based. Uh, it means 15% for partners from an EU member state and 22% for partners from an IPA state. Uh, in any other cases, when we don't use simplified cost options, we use the real cost uh, uh, methodology for the reimbursement. It means that all cost uh, should be uh, 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 incurred and paid by the project partners. Uh, this uh, cost should be uh, justified expenditures, uh, which means that uh, an invoice or any other equivalent accounting document is needed for the eligibility. Uh, and all costs should be 
uh, referenced in an accounting system, as uh, you know, it's a new element. So let's see in more details what we have to know about the lump sum for preparation cost. Uh, this amount covers all the costs incurred in the preparation and submission of the project proposal until the starting date of the expenses eligibility period. Uh, as I said, if the amount is fixed, 37,000 euros. This lump sum is mandatory and uh, which is new element that it can be provided for the for the partners who's coming from the IPA, IPA uh, countries. So please, uh, please uh, uh, think about it uh, very carefully and uh, we, we, want, we recommend that all partners who's participating to the drafting, to the application form should benefit from this long sum. And a little reminder that this amount is part of the total budget of the project. Okay, let's see the five uh, categories we, we can uh, budget uh, for this proposal. The first one is the staff cost. Uh, what we have to know about the staff cost that <laughs> Uh, the eligible costs in this category are <coughs> limited to the payment of gross salaries of the staff. So, and uh, uh, as part of the simplification, only one methodology is used to calculate the eligible, eligible staff cost. Uh, this is the so-called fixed percentage method. Uh, this was a little bit elaborated and harmonized among the interact programs by interact so uh, maybe you will found this methodology in other uh, interact program as well uh, the main advantage of this uh, method is that there is no ob obligation to establish a separate working time registration system and you should uh, only um, set and, and fix monthly percentage for each staff person to calculate the eligible uh, cost of the staff. Uh, I move on. Yes, here you find always the reference if you want to have more details on this category. So the second is the office and administration cost. Uh, this category uh, covers operating and administrative expenditures necessary for the project implementation. This is, we can call the uh, indirect cost. Um, the, the detailed list of the type of the expenditures which can be eligible under this category you can find in the program manual. Uh, what is important that this uh, cost category is mandatory for all project partners and is fixed at 15% uh, of the eligible staff cost. Uh, this percentage uh, is the same as in the current programming period. Um, and uh, I just want to remind you and to, to call your attention that uh, make sure that that you select this option for all participating partners in the GEM system, but we will see it later on uh, with Massimo. So, uh, the next one is the travel and accommodation cost. Uh, in this category, I will spend a bit more time to presenting it because uh, this is one of the program's main simplifi simplifications measures uh, that's concerned to this cost category and uh, it has a, an important impact on the implementation of the project. So, um, under this cost category, <coughs> you can, uh, you can uh, 
you can find the <laughs> travel cost, cost of meals, accommodation cost, visa cost, and per diem. If someone knows better daily allowances, this list is exhaustive. It means that uh, only this type of uh, cost can be eligible under this cost category. Uh, and uh, any other any items which are covered by this uh, category cannot be uh, uh, part of any other cost category. So uh, let's see what I have to know about this category. Uh, <coughs> for the calculation of this cost category, uh, it's a new element in the program that you can choose the simplified cost options. As we said, uh, we recommend to use this option because uh, there are a lot of uh, advantage of it. I will tell you it later on. Uh, but only in case that the flat rate is not an appropriate method for the partner organization, they can choose also the real cost uh, methodology. Um, this rate, uh, the 15 and the 22, these rates have been determined based on historical real data from uh, the current programming period and uh, they, they are set out to be used to all beneficiaries. Uh, these rates have been calculated, taking into consideration the average values of travel and expenditures declared by all partners per country. So the proposed uh, fixed percentage suite for a big majority of the partners. Uh, so and the real cost is an option um, only in justified uh, cases. And uh, I want to remember you that this justification must be provided during the application phase. Uh, so, at this point, it is important that every partner should choose one of these two methodologies. Uh, and if, if you choose one of the options, that this will be the, it remain your uh, methodology for all inter-Euromed projects in which you participate. So it's uh, important, it's a choose for maybe for se seven years. Uh, and uh, it's important to say that this possible, this uh, choose, this uh, chosen methodology won't be, uh, won't be possible to modify during the implementation. So, Please be very careful uh, on this point. Uh, what are the, the characteristics and the advantage of this uh, category? Uh, there is no need to set a detailed budget for this course category now in this phase. So it maybe it's a, it's a big uh, simplification for your uh, drafting as well. Uh, no obligation to document or prove that these expenses have been incurred and paid, which means uh, no audit trail is uh, needed. Uh, so this, uh, this flat rate is uh, automatically calculated and reimbursed. So as a result of implementing uh, this um, uh, simplified cost options, this flat rate, uh, we expect uh, uh, a huge reduction of the control effort and that the project partners can be focused on the project activities uh, and not necessary to uh, keep, in, keep collect uh, every metro ticket in, in your project. Um, so that's, that's, that's the standard reason we highly recommend to use this option. Uh, in, in very exceptional and duly justified cases, you can also use, as I mentioned, the real cost options. Um, 
in this case, uh, uh, you have to. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, you have to you have to complete uh, you have to complete all material is needed as as in, in the current period. So by every uh, travel activities, the link to the project and the implementation must be documented. Uh, also, <laughs> all national and internal eligibility rules on this type of cost uh, has to be considered, and uh, all cost must be covered and paid by the partner organization. Uh, and all these, um, these criteria will be checked uh, during the implementation. So, that's, that's it. So, the fourth uh, cost category is are the external expenses and the service cost. Um, here, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, here, uh, mm -hmm. In case uh, a partner does not have certain competences within its own organization, it is uh, possible to outsource some of the project tasks. So this category includes the cost of expertise and services provided by a public or private entity or by a natural person who is not declared as staff of the, of the partner. So, uh, just a reminder that uh, under this category, you should budget the costs related to the national control. It's the new name of the first level control. Uh, so, and uh, also under this category, you should budget the travel and accommodation cost for external experts, speakers, chairs, persons, and uh, the other external service providers. So, uh, and here I would like just highlight and recommend you that uh, that indicate in the budget in the application form at least the description of each plant expertise and service uh, and the corresponding amount. But later on, my colleague will show you how to do this. Um, and uh, our last category is the equipment cost. Yes. <laughs> uh, under, under this uh, cost category, you can budget uh, equipments which are necessary for the implementation of your projects. Uh, this equipment can be purchased, uh, rented or leased. Uh, so, and also important that this equipment cannot be part of the, of the office and administrative cost category. So, this will be checked by the national controller. Um, I want to say that um, for this, yeah, for the list of the type of the expenditures related to this <coughs> category, uh, please uh, refer and see it in the program manual. I didn't uh, tell you now <laughs> the whole list. But what is important that uh, partners should foresee the cost on pro rata basis or according to a depression plan. Uh, for example, in case that the uh, equipment is not exclusively used by the project or, or in case the equipment has been purchased before the eligibility period and the partner wants to uh, declare the amortization cost of the, the equipment. So uh, any equipment to be used for the project management must be reasonably purchased at the beginning of the project and it should be aligned with the staff uh, plan of course, uh, and uh, there is a um, one point of attention. Uh, it's 
important to highlight is that for the equipment which are located and operated outside of the cooperation area, in Interreg European Cooperation Area and outside the European Union, the express approval of the Joint Secretariat is uh, needed in all cases. So for, for uh, helping our uh, work and to see your project in, uh, in a complete way, uh, we ask you to indicate in the budget uh, at least the description of each type of equipment and the corresponding amount. So Perfect. that was my part. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Just in time. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, so um, only to summarize very quickly the main uh, new aspect if you were already with us in the 4020 period, are uh, the indexation of the uh, lump sum for preparation course, the generalization, let's say, of the method uh, fixed percentage, which was method B in the 4020 period, and uh, the travel and accommodation flat rate. So we have uh, some reaction, uh, some uh, Welcome for this uh, this new this new proposal, uh, and uh, I will start with a question we already have in the chat. Uh, so there was a first question concerning the um, the personnel about uh, workers. No, first it was uh, the staff cost can be fixed for at least one period, one year period or more. Uh, in the manual that you will see very soon, uh, we ask you to kindly uh, use as a minimum uh, same percentage per staff per period. That means uh, six months. So you have to determine a six months uh, percentage for each uh, staff member. Then uh, if you are able to, um, to have visibility on uh, a year, uh, uh, participation, uh, yearly participation, it would be better for you and for the management of your of your data, but uh, there is no uh, no other obligation. The idea is as a minimum uh, six months and then uh, what you are able to foresee, uh, the better for you. Uh, then concerning, so I, I cannot see, sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, the personnel cost was about the specific case of workers already contributing to other projects. So the fixed percentage method is um, is an estimation. So no one will come to check and to cross check uh, timesheet or if you have an auditor that asks you for timesheet and real um, real time work on the project, uh, it will not be legitimate because you have to fix this percentage in a reasonable manner um, depending on the time spent on the project and the real activity implemented by your structure, so by your institution. So the idea is here to have the best um, estimation at the beginning and then you will be able to adapt it depending on your implication on the Horizon project, for, for instance. Mm, so I I go I go forward and if it's not clear we will uh, come sorry, back. On the... Excuse me, J just yeah. Just, it was the, the the other way around. It's not regarding how to justify it in interreg Euromed, but how to justify the fixed percentage of interreg Euromed on this uh, with Horizon Europe, for example, because we have to include all the work time and including the work uh, the time worked on on the interact project. Yeah, well, so if you are claiming uh, part time of the working time of a worker in the in the horizon, it's ob obvious that internally you will not be able to claim more than 50% of the time uh, remaining for, for med. Then how you estimate this proportion is more on how your partner is participating and implementing activities. Because for instance, we know that at the beginning of a project, we will have mainly uh, the, 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 the coordinators uh, working on the project. Then in the following semesters, when activities are going to be more 
uh, uh, more um, developed uh, by uh, other partner, uh, there will be um, an improvement uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, of your capacity as partner in the in the project. But the only justification that will be asked uh, for um, certifying cost will be the task assignment template in which you state the name, the name of the person, the percentage for the monthly implication and the activities the partner is participating to. So if you say that he is organizing an event and at the end the event is not organized, it's clear that um, you cannot uh, justify the percentage uh, estimated at the beginning. But this is um, a, it's a principle of proportionality. It's not, uh, there is no other um, audit trail that will be asked to you by controls. Okay, thank you. Okay. Be confident with this method because in the current period we we never faced uh, any auditor that asked for timesheet or for and in the majority of our partner were working with this method in the in the 4020 period so if you are coherent with the reality uh, there will be no no one is going to go to see the the increase of one or uh, zero comma five uh, percent on the from one one to the other Okay. The, the idea is to be coherent in the general approach by semester as a minimum. And to, yeah, and to uh, to to not double claim the same uh, the same cost twice. Okay. It's it's fine. It's clear. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then uh, the person. Okay. There's a question on travel cost. Yeah, uh, yeah, on travel cost. If justified, the percentage cannot be increased. Uh, no, the um, the fifteen percent has been determined for EU uh, partners, so partner located in uh, EU territories. Uh, it has been estimated uh, based on analysis of uh, historical data and a cross check with other programs. So we. Mm, we checked with all programs uh, sharing our part of, of the full uh, the full area uh, covered by Euromed, and uh, all partners uh, matched with uh, the the fifty percent. So uh, then, uh, based on the data, I'm trying to read myself. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so this is a threshold for EU travelers. So if you are based in an IPA territory, uh, you can uh, you can go for the 22. We ask you to remain on the 50 uh, on the 15 and 22 percent. No, uh, there is no possibility of variation of uh, of this percentage. The only difference <coughs> is the territory in which the partner is based, and uh, then depending about the actuality. Uh, we also uh, take into account that there is a largest use of uh, online meeting today and we remind that the budget line travel accommodation is only for staff. So if you are um, external expert, if you are if you have to budget external expert or invited persons, those costs will not be covered by the, the 50% which is reserved to, to staff cost and uh, should enter under the, um, under the external expertise and services uh, category. So there, uh, if there is someone in your institution participating in one meeting per year, uh, for instance, a coordinator, you can ask the cost in the, as invited person and the external expertise, for instance. And if really, really uh, the estimation doesn't match with the the flat rate. Uh, you justify explaining that your partner is located in a very uh, um, how do you say isolated, isolated. isolated area. Sorry, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then uh, you you prefer to go for real cost. 
Okay, external. Yes, to the same line, an, an IPA partners can opt for real costs even if uh, you partners. Yes, of course, this is possible because the choice is made at partner level. So each partner choose which methodology to be used. For the full staff office structure in all projects he is going to participate to. <coughs> and can we the travel budget increase it? No. No. For the travel budget, it will be automatically calculated by the system based on eligible staff cost. So there is no possibility to move it. Um, external expertise and equipment cost eligible for measure well, only cost in communication activity. Only personal cost for both. No, no, yes, you can you can budget. Okay, you can foresee external expertise and equipment for management and communication. Uh, the idea was to to recruit the staff for implementing those activities, despite the fact that uh, the work packages, uh, management and communication uh, doesn't ex uh, don't exist anymore. But the, it was not about staff, uh, the status of the staff. It was to have uh, a team dedicated to those, uh, those aspects. Mm, if our country does not have a good connection, okay. Which can prevent them from yes. seeing it. As okay. already said by, my, by Ludivine, though the 22% is, <clears throat> is the result of a calculation done between uh, among all the costs uh, incurred in the current programming period until uh, 30 June 2020, by the, by the uh, beginning of the program until 30 June 2020, so not considering the effects of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic period, so in the normal situation. So when we <coughs> compare those figures with uh, other programs sharing the IPA uh, cooperation area, area, and we we choose a, a method, um, a percentage which is the nearest to all the percentage that we uh, found out in the for the for the majority of the partners, because of course then there are there are there were partners which uh, had a ratio on 40%, but they are very iso isolated uh, cases, so we decided to put off, uh, put off away from the population of the, of the calculation of the ratio. Yeah, the general advice is to follow the simplified cost option, and once you have the total amount for travel, try to foresee very in advance your travel, so you can make the difference in uh, during the implementation phase. And, I don't know if it has worse. And on the same issue, the, the question for Mr. Narayo. Uh, no, it's not possible to change the method as far as you have uh, one ongoing project with one method. So if all your projects have ended and in the last one you want to switch to another method, you can change, but why? Uh, you have one project running with one method, you will have to to remain uh, to respect this method till project end. This is because in, in terms of risk of uh, double claim and uh, justification, audit trade and everything, it, it could be very complex for, for you and controllers. And in case of audit, uh, it's a very um, um, yeah, <laughs> a very complex point. Then, um, and there was one question about the share of the lump sum preparation. Um, it has to be done by the partnership. Uh, it is open. Uh, it has been indexed based on IPA uh, data integration. So we invite you also to consider really the IPA participation during the preparation of the um, of the proposal and uh, to agree the share of this lump sum based on the pro rata participation of uh, each partner to the um, to the call uh, to the um, application from preparation. So then um, it, it 
it's better for you if you formalize the agreement from all your partners uh, about this share. Uh, if you don't, uh, they will anyway see uh, the total when they, you will give them the access to as a reader to the application form. So we highly recommend to, to agree uh, the share uh, before, before filling in the, the application form. If it's fine, I think we answer to all questions for this session. Yeah. Okay. So well, uh, I give back the floor to Massimo for the the gems uh, the gems session. The gems session. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, is, there are only there is only a recap slide, but we already said most of the information that are contained in him. So, yes, we've, maybe we we'll have the time to talk about the person declaration at the end of the demo. So, basically, we talked about <coughs> all the point contained in this slide. So, maybe most of you already done the Christmas pre-submission check. So you see there are certain points to be considered in order to consider the application for uh, complete. So I jump to the jump monitoring system. Okay. Everybody see the the, the web page. Yeah. So as already um, told my team, you will have the possibility um, to create a new account here. This is namely for all the partners participating in the partnership because you as lead partner, we suppose that you already created one. So if you want to give uh, access to your uh, partners uh, to application form, they have to previously register in the database of the James monitoring system. So uh, I will enter with a um, an account which is a, as applicant user so i will see uh, you will see what you are really seeing now as uh, applicant uh, and i will continue filling in the application that uh, my colleague has uh, filled in in the previous uh, sessions um, only to resume a little bit this the left side of the, uh, the application form uh, to remind only to remind a specific point that was stipulated in the first part here for example uh, in the project in the identification of the application form we wrongly put 75 <coughs> this is was this was a new error because you have to put it as 80 is a uh, as mandatory field so uh, please be very careful here because <clears throat> the system will calculate automatically calculate the 14 periods range for uh, the budget uh, as you see as you surely know the b part is made of the made of partnership then there is the project description in it and which has been already um, uh, so with my my colleague in previous session, and then there are the uh, overview for budget that we already talked when talking about the the commitment rules and the project lab sum. We uh, have created already uh, three uh, three partners. The lead partner in this case, which is being um, is located in uh, an IPA area. The, namely from Bosnia and Herzegovina, I think. Then there is partner one, and uh, which is located in the EU area, and um, 
and the part three is going with the real cost on travel uh, accommodation uh, um, cost and is located in new area too but we will focus mainly on the first the part and then we will see the difference with the, among all those uh, categories so as you can see here the partner is located in IPA country and the, the important field to be filled in is the, this one in the address. So by selecting the country here, you give the, the tag of IPA and uh, EU member uh, states uh, partner. And um, as a main point that we want to highlight with you here is that once you have <coughs> completed the uh, working plan part of the application form. Our general advice is not to jump to the budget directly, is that is instead to pass from the state aid analysis because um, when you will uh, end the state aid analysis, maybe you will have to modify the, some activity or uh, add or uh, delete uh, some of them or add a working plan uh, in your uh, in your activity in the working plan. So this should be an effect on the on the budget. So our general advice is to complete this part first, and then when you have a clear um, assuming an uh, overview of the of the activities mm -hmm. with the set aid check done you can jump to the uh, budget and then to the co-financing part because it depends from the consolidation of the, the budget so as already said in the first part uh, each partner has to um, complete this uh, self check even if, if it's made by the lead partner physically the information should be provided by each partner and then the lead partner is responsible of the filling in the information here as you can see there are two main criteria the first one is to know or not if they, there are economic activities in the, in the, in the project working plan a work plan so okay Excuse me, is come on. Bon, bon, ça okay. So for the definition of economic activity, you can refer to the to the program manual. So you each partner has to uh, revise the, the working plan and see if there is any uh, activity within that. Uh, that match with the definition of economic activities done by the European Commission. If not, you can easily, uh, as, as we know here, but you, you have to remember that you have to fill in the field, the text field here, because if not, you will have problem when the pre-submission check will be done. So if you don't put text here, you can you will not be able to uh, submit the application form. And one particular uh, one particular thing is that you have to do it in both languages, because as you can see here, there is a little point uh, the, the the language. So it will be uh, there until you fill the, um, the, the fields, correctly the fields. So as you can see, the points are uh, disappeared, so you can continue. Uh, continue. So, uh, I put here some text, example copy pasting from the, the question in order to simplify the, the filling in the, the, the demo but you can pass uh, whenever you want here the, according to the, the composition of the, of the activities and the, the nature of the activities for each part. The second criterion is to evaluate or not the economic or non-economic advantages in the framework of the project for each partner. So 
uh, in line with the question done uh, on the, in the chat here we evaluate if there is some advantage and if there is if there is the possibility to consider it as direct or indirect stated in, namely the first one is about the direct one and the second question is about the indirect one so you can go through this uh, this question specific question analyze the working plan for each partner and see if there are partners that are benefiting or not of uh, some advantages direct or direct advantages in, uh, in the framework in the framework of the project and filling the um, the, the field accordingly. But in this case, we suppose that everything is good and everything is no in the first stage. In the first stage. And the last question is about the indirect stated, so the Article 20A. So in this case, the question is maybe to answer to the question too. Is, the question is very specific about if the, the, the presence or not of external organization that will benefit of a, a, a call it operator which will benefit from the project implementation and directly from the project implementation of, of the, the project implementation. So, in case, for example, you need, uh, you will foresee a voucher scheme or uh, some training or some for uh, operator that are external to the partnership, you will uh, uh, you will have to answer yes to this question because you you foresee foresee it. So you have to uh, complete the self check criteria uh, accordingly. Uh, let's see here, for example, um, when, when I when I ask well no to all four questions, I can see the result of the check is no risk of state aid. So here we are in the green part, on the left part of the scheme, <coughs> previously showed. And um, in this case, you can continue sub submitting the uh, application form without to do anything. You save your changes and the search check criteria is uh, complete and you can continue by submitting the budget as was foreseen. <clears throat> then I would like to show you um, the another case when you answer yes to all questions. Uh, in this case the, the system give you an error, like the second possibility, the, the yellow one, let's say. So there is a risk of state aid. Here you have the, the opportunity to modify, to identify the, 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 the activities that have been state aid relevance, uh, that have been considered as state aid relevance, and put some uh, modification to those activities and in order to accomplish the scheme. And in this case, you can go back to the self-check and put here no, no, and no, and accomplish and go back to the green part of the scheme that we saw. In this case, there is a risk of indirect aid, it's the same thing. So, if in this, this is the most uh, difficult case because in this case, the, probably you cannot modify your activity because the activities are like that, are the, the, the core of the, of, the, of the project implementation. So, in this case, you have to specify which activities are state aid relevant in, uh, in the work plan. So, for simplification, we put two activities, so we select one or two and uh, specify to which um, scheme you will want to adopt in, uh, in this case. So, in this case, we are talking about indirect stated, so you will choose the GBER Article 28. Okay. In case of uh, state aid, we say classic state aid, you will have to choose 
um, uh, between two uh, regimes. Uh, the one is the general de minimis and the GBL Article 20 with the characteristic that we already said uh, a few minutes ago. But we are uh, optimistic and we see that there is no risk of cetane in this project proposal because there was a, a trap here because in this case the lead partner is IPA uh, partner so the partner is obliged to not have economic activities in the, to not foresee economic activities in the working plan so uh, in this case the self check compliance should be in, in, in this form because uh, if not the partner and in this case the whole uh, project uh, should be not considered for evaluation so uh, going through this once the state aid compliance uh, check compliance is uh, complete you jump to the remember to save of course <laughs> Then you can jump to the to the budget. Uh, maybe most of you have already seen this page, but is it is it, better if we summarize a little uh, the three main composition of the page. In the first part, there is a budget overview, which we will be the result of all the operation done in the next minute. Uh, here there are the two options that are already seen um, in the PowerPoint presentation, but here there are the, the, the cases. And here there are the uh, budget uh, possibility in uh, categories, cost categories uh, based on real cost uh, methodology. And then the last part is, com is made of uh, the project lump sum because it it will be not um, built in here, but as you can see, there is a specific session here, the E1, uh, the very last, the very end of the application form. So, going uh, to the budget option, as already said, you have to select office administration, um, the, the option, you have to select the option, and it is mandatory for all application for, for all projects. Okay, for all partners. So once you select, you save changes and you have the, uh, the, the option chosen. And then you have the possibility here to choose <coughs> between simplified cost option and the real cost for travel and accommodation cost calculation. So once you select simplified cost option, the <coughs> The, the default uh, field, the default value is 22. In this case, it's okay because the partner is from APA countries, but we will see the case of uh, you partner uh, later on. So you change, you save, and then uh, you can see that the travel accommodation uh, disappeared from cal the calculation of real cost disappeared and the uh, simplified cost option appeared suddenly. So, Let's go to the staff. Once you uh, click on uh, add, you will have a row which will be opened and with a specific uh, feed which is called the amount. Then here uh, for simplification, you can pass the whole budget that you foresee to uh, spend for the whole partner the whole staff cost of the partner. So this is okay, this is a situation that is accepted by the by us. So if it is accepted by you, I mean in terms of management and uh, follow, follow up of the project is okay for us. So you you have your own calculation of the staff cost in a separate file and you pass the total here and it's, it's okay. The only thing that we ask you is to uh, pass the detail here for period. So uh, I pass, I, fail, I make a copy paste here for simplicity, but of course you will have different amounts depending from the period from the effort distribution that already we said a few minutes ago. 
So, but here I put some um, some value like that. But remember to fill it, uh, to fill all the, the fields, and here you have um, uh, an automatic calculation done by the system that tell you if you are um, putting more or less, uh, depending on the total budget that you have uh, declared on the at the very beginning of the of the line. I think it's like that. Yeah. Okay. So gap is zero, so you can save changes because if not, you cannot save. Uh, so our general recommendation is to fill in at least the first six months, the six period, sorry, of the um, of this part, yeah, especially for staff, uh, and to fill it in a realistic way because this will make part of the uh, specific evaluation done by the program and uh, on the two years basis. So, and the first six period should be filled in in a accurate way, in a realistic way, and then if you want to pass in the other periods, so um, because we understand that in seven years there should be many things could change, so you can pass uh, the values that approximately values that you that you consider to be passed. So once the uh, changes are saved, you see here the automatic calculation done by the system. So based on the 220,000 euro um, foreseen for staff, you will have 53,000 for uh, office administration and 48,400 for uh, travel and accommodation that you can um, use uh, whenever you want. Going to the next cost category, is external expertise and services. We put two examples. One should be the national control, which is the new name for the this level controller, or as already said uh, by Nokia. Here you can put if you know the hour procedure for C, but if you don't know, you can put uh, if you don't know yet, you can put another value. I pass public procurement for the moment. <clears throat> and as amount, I will pass 1,000 euro for a period. Um, the thing that I would like to highlight here is that here, as you can see here in French, you have still the little circle. So you have to copy paste. Our general advice is to copy paste the values for both languages. So we have and not to pass the line or slash or symbols because if, when we will make the, ex, the export of the application form in both languages, we will have problem in, uh, in seeing it. So here we pass. Those compulsory, uh, both, both languages are compulsory in some section. It was not a program choice. So it's a, a configuration from the system. We are trying to improve that for the following uh, calls. But for the moment, in principle, for the program, it was only the summary and uh, the, um, the description of activities. But uh, we couldn't deactivate the, the request of both languages for some section of the application form. So for this first call, you are uh, experimenting uh, this uh, this uh, yeah. You need to be patient. Yeah. Thank you. So. Attends, ça a déconnecté. Non, c'est bon, c'est toi. C'est toi. Thank you. Okay. Non, ça va. I just added a second line in the external <coughs> experience. This is the, the catering for the kickoff meeting, for example. 
we assume that it costs one thousand euro and we pass only in the first period. So we save changes and then we assume in this case that the external expertise <coughs> cost category is complete. Then we go to the equipment, we make an example of by a computer. It's always a public procurement which will cost 450 euros. In this case, you have a field that's called investment, but you will we will not have the possibility to fill in, and because in this call for proposal is this cost, this specification is not for sale, so you will not, you you do not have nothing to do, anything to do here. So you fill in the period if you buy at the very beginning, which is the recommendation of the program. Indeed, you pass the whole uh, amount here, or if you have a depreciation plan, you will pass the, the pro rata according to the scheme. And then you go to the save part. So you say you can say here that the real cost part and the, 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 the basic structure of the budget is complete. The only thing that we need to uh, complete in order to have a clear uh, overview for the lead partner is the project lump sum. So we have to jump to the E1 project lump sum session. Here you have the possibility to add a lump sum and uh, select the preparation cost. I don't know if you see, maybe preparation cost. Here you have a, a menu where you have the possibility to select the period, but here please be careful because you have to select mandatorily preparation one. So even if you have the possibility to choose, you have to choose preparation. Okay, because if not, it will be lost in the, in the budget. This amount will be lost in the budget uh, composition. So it's very important to, to record as preparation period. And uh, in this case, we assume that the lead partner has 17,000 euro and uh, the remaining part is split to the two remaining partner. And we save change and it's okay. Now we go back to the lead partner budget and we see that the partner overview is complete. So we have the, the overview of the budget, the um, split in uh, cost category, and the total here at the very right of the, of the table. So before going to the resuming table and so on, I will, we would like to point, point out some specific, maybe, there is a question or we go... Uh, well, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, well, in the construction of your of your budget, it depends on the capacity you have to, to detail uh, already the, um, the, the services to be to be contracted. Then we, uh, in order to have uh, better visibility on the activity to be implemented, we ask you to detail uh, the type of service. But then if you put uh, a kickoff organization, and uh, in any case, it will not be blocking for the declaration uh, pass. Um, we get the confirmation from the IT provider that uh, even if uh, you detail something in the application phase, you will be able to claim cost uh, freely then. But uh, in order for our colleagues to have a better uh, assessment of your activities, uh, it's more to understand uh, really how you are going to, to, to implement uh, your budget, to spend your budget. So you don't have the obligation to detail each, uh, each uh, service, but uh, try to be um, as exhaustive as possible concerning the, the activity to be covered and not the prestation. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. If if it's okay now, we can see. And yes. sorry, uh, yes. on the on this question about the equipment, we, we want to add the detail because uh, in the case of equipment, there will be uh, some needs for validation. So if you uh, foresee equipment, uh, try to detail at least uh, the, um, the categories depending on what is uh, on the categories stated in the manual. So you will see that there is an exhaustive list from the regulation stating um, the type of, um, of material. Uh, that can be acquired, and uh, we need this information for the, the assessment and then the follow-up. So, for the, the equipment, it, uh, it should be um, accurately yeah. detailed. Yeah. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. It made me think that we haven't seen this part, the last tab of the part, which is the co-financing uh, part. So once your budget is set, you have the total budget for the partner here. And it is uh, all uh, distributed to the partner <laughs> until you select the interreg funds, which is the name of the new funds. So once you select the fund, the, the system will make the calculation by <clears throat> its own and will give you back the 80% and the remaining 20% that should be ensured by the partner contribution. So once you have this selected the fund, you go in the um, section origin of partner contribution and you will select this line only if you foresee to provide your own contribution. So. If the LP, IPA area partner, lead partner, foresee to provide their own contribution, has to be has to select here the public private according to what has been selected in the in the section um, identification of the partner here, and uh, part the totality of the amount here here and uh, save changes. So the co-financing part is complete in this sense. And here you have a summarizing table which provides the, how the 20% is uh, distributed. Let me um, add a specification for, um, for those partners that will foresee uh, an external uh, contribution, external contribution, and a second case of the external automatic contribution. So in this case, if you don't, uh, if you, if the partner will not provide the contribution by its own, um, this should be foreseen here. It should be added, one, uh, one line should be added, one row, external co-financing here, and here you have the possibility to choose among three uh, options. If the external co-financing is provided by a public um, entity or a private entity or automatic public, this is the name that has been done, uh, give, gave to the um, scheme followed by the Italian and the Greek partners who will benefit of the Fondo di Rotazione to, uh, for the Italian one and um, the, I don't know Greek, sorry, that is the, the, the mechanism provided by the minister in Greece. So in this case, we assume that the external cofinancing is provided by a public uh, entity. So we put the amount here and we save it. Okay. This is the... Um, now we can see, we can say that the, um, the partner has filled in all the information. Before I jump to the, the, the end of this session, let's see um, a partner coming from a new area. In this case, the state aid compliance should be filled in accordingly, very accurately. Uh, remembering you that the uh, JS will make an assessment, specific assessment on what 
on the information provided in this section. So uh, it will be double checked somehow if you want. Um, the only important difference between what we have seen uh, with the IPA area and the uh, EU area partner is not the office administration because it should be uh, mandatory field for all the partners, remember. It's, uh, the only difference is about the travel and accommodation flight rate because as you can see it's the default 22%. So in case of partners from uh, EU area, you have to manually change to 15 and uh, save changes. So um, you will see that the staff cost has been prefilled by us uh, yesterday. And you can see that the, there is the same amount for travel and for office administration for the partner. Then you can fill the other section as, uh, as you wish. And then you see here that the lump sum has been already uh, recorded by the, pro the, by the program. Uh, because we feel it in a separate section. So we assume here that the partner budget overview for this uh, partner is, is 296. Then the uh, co-financing part should be filled in. We uh, have already donated to try to speed up a little bit and not to uh, do the same operation all the time. And uh, Going to the last case, let's say, there is a partner from Portugal which will not follow the travel and accommodation uh, method of calculation based on simplified cost option. So in this case, only the first option should be uh, selected. And uh, you see that the travel and accommodation cost category is still on real cost. So here you, the partner has to specify the amount to be allocated for travel and accommodation and split it for each period. Remembering that <clears throat> all the audit trade that you already, uh, we already talked about during the, the presentation. So uh, again, the preparation costs are already set here because we feel in a separate section. So in this case, we can say uh, that the, um, the budget is uh, spready somehow. So we will have the um, resuming table here, which will be very useful for you and uh, most of all for the whole partnership to resume the operation done in a financial point of view, of course. So here the, you have D1, which is the project co-financing source for partners. So you have the list of partners on the left and the contribution for, seeing for each partner with an important percentage here, which is the distribution of the eligible budget for each partner. Then the second one is partner and cost category. So you have the list of partners and the list of cost categories um, on the top. And uh, the last one, which is the one that was mentioned during the, the presentation, is the overview per period. And uh, just, there are two, tabel, two tables, namely, the one is per partner and the one is per, per funds. Okay? So, the most important, from the point of view of management at program level, if you want, is the first one because here we have we will see the details for each partner and for each period. So when we were talking about the decommitment rule, we uh, were referring basically to this table. So be aware that this amount that you will put here should be as much real as possible. So because then when you will enter in the second in the implementation period of the, of the project, you uh, will have 
as much as closer to those amounts to, uh, to, to avoid the risk of the commitment growth. Uh, we want to point out that in this programming period we didn't have such problem because we tried and uh, we reached a good uh, planification with the, the lead partner, with the, all the projects uh, of, the, of the budget uh, uh, implementation per period and because of a good um, expansion, uh, expenditure rate. So in this case, we, are, we, we were able to avoid this, uh, this risk and we hope for the next programming period to maintain this as it is. And um, last but not least is the um, share within your, within your partnership of those information that we see today. So here you have the possibility to add um, uh, an account, a mail account, in order to give it uh, access and privilege to the application form. You have three levels of privilege, view, edit and manage. Of course, the applicant has the manage one and the um, other partner are usually in a read-only mode, so in a view. Yeah. Privilege. Uh, we, we highly recommend to avoid uh, giving the managed uh, profile to more than one or really as a maximum two persons because we don't have uh, experience on how the system will save uh, your modification if you are a different person feeding in the information in the system. So yeah. please uh, try to limit the manage uh, profile to one or maximum two, uh, two persons. Yes, but I think at this stage there is the view one which is relevant for the majority of the partnership and maybe another account to edit because maybe the lead partner wants to share the filling in work uh, efforts to with another uh, account maybe which could be internal to the lead partner still. so let's make well, as final points i will enter as partner Remember that I already registered this mail to the James database because if not, the system will not allow you to give me to give them privileges. Okay. Okay. Now I am in as partner two of the same uh, application form. So as you can see, I. And uh, join, I, I joined only one application form, is the only one I see here. So this is what your partner will see. They have not the possibility <coughs> to modify uh, data contained in the application form. As you can see here, the, the fields are in green, so there are no, it's read only mode. So we think that this part is very useful, this functionality of the system is very useful when you want to uh, confirm all the data uh, provided in the application form with your partner. So in order avoiding screenshots and copy paste to Excel, etc, etc. And uh, it will be prevent you from a, a great workload. So you will give privileges to the to a partner, and they will access in a read-only mode and confirm or not, hopefully yes for you, the, the information provided. Once everything is, is done, um, there is the check and submit, and then you can uh, complete the application form once the press submission check is all in uh, green. So, I think that this was all from our side. Yeah, maybe we can come back to uh, about the question about the translation. So, I explained that James uh, asked for more uh, translation than what we need. Uh, but you have to uh, fill in, in French and English, the, the project summarize. 
um, in any case, it will not be blocking for accepting your your application form. Uh, it is not an eligibility aspect, but uh, it's uh, it's the point uh, we need in French and English. And also, I think it was a project title. Um, the detail is on the um, the courtesy application form. So I will look at it. Uh, but I'm I'm sure about the summary. Okay, and the project title, and yeah. And those are the only points that, from a, pro a program point of view, are fundamental in French and English. Okay, uh, and then I think there was another question about... Um, uh, yeah, only to tell you that for the uh, any partner from an EU member state applying for 22% of a flat rate, uh, there will be a blocking uh, functionality in the system. So it will not be possible for you to, uh, to submit your proposal. Uh, so be sure that uh, this is uh, this is clear before trying to submit because if not, you will have to reopen the application form and dispatch the, the budget in other lines. Um, and then, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, about the duration, the periods, the, um, the two months, uh, the two additional months will be uh, on the on the last period, not on the on the first um, the first one. And I think that's all. I missed. Ah, for the staff course, is there any additional detail table info? Uh, no, for the moment at the application stage, you only have to fill in the total uh, as um, shown by, by Massimo. And then during the declaration, you will have to, uh, we hope that there will be an automatic calculation of the, the eligible budget. Uh, but in any case, you will have to fill uh, for each staff member the, um, the percentage uh, in uh, in the um, task assignment template that will be provided by the program. So we hope we will integrate the template with the percentage in the system. And if not, uh, it will be a document to be added uh, on the um, um, to, be, to be signed uh, and to be added on uh, on James um, outside. Yeah. Implementation. Um, uh, for the period, okay, external expenditure, okay, and I think that's all. Um, I see more there is another point you want to present, or and for the project privilege, you presented everything, so yes, I think it's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, we can go back on the partner declaration. So the document is being uh, will be submitted in. Uh, to our member state and uh, available on the system very soon. In the meantime, uh, you will be able, uh, once available, to upload them from this space uh, shown by Massimo. And uh, the content has to be agreed. So we remind you the four key points, which are uh, the origin and amount of co-financing, the travel and accommodation method of each of your partners, the state aid relevance activity and conclusions, and uh, the share of the preparation cost. So be sure that all those four points are agreed with your partner before submitting. Uh, then I think we we saw everything. So if you have questions, let us know. And if no, the FAQ will be updated uh, when we receive the information. Okay, this time. Okay, so well, we close in time. Thank you very much for participating. And uh, well, if you have any question, you may address them to the the FAQ, and and we will we will answer to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much to all. And uh, well, great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.